Welcome back to Leeds Lately. Today's video is going to be Gracia's Tactics Explained. Now that is Gracia, not Garcia, and I can imagine that a lot of people are going to make that mistake over the coming weeks and months, but it is Javi Gracia that we have brought in. At last we have a manager, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk through all of his tactics. Now, a lot of people have requested this video, so if you smash that like button down below and hit that sub button if you're new as well, that will really help me out. Let's get straight into it though. So as you can see here, leads are set up in the yellow markers as we always do because we can't have us being red now, can we? Um, the yellow markers then, they're set up in a 4-4-2 formation and this is what you'll find in the defensive phase that leads will play pretty much a traditional 4-4-2. Now the difference is, we'll talk about that later, the defensive phase, but everybody wants to hear about attack, don't they? Because that's the exciting part. So we're gonna do that first. When we're in the attacking phase, it becomes more of a four triple two. Now alarm bells will be going off in people's heads um, about the way that Marsh tried to implement a four triple two and it was far too narrow and we got exploited. People are able to play right through us, um, but it is gonna be slightly different to that and I'll talk through that now. So. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the wingers then because they're the most important part of this formation, if you will. So when we push these players up at the pitch, imagine that in, imagining that this is actually in a game scenario, we would have two strikers and those two strikers are probably gonna be a combination of Bamford and Ruter, Bamford and Nonto. Bamford, basically the player that can hold the ball up, can get other players playing around him, get them into play and help them to get the ball forward to goal. And then Nonto or Ruta, somebody who's gonna be there to get all those knockdowns, to get that final touch and to get through on goal and actually score the goals. Bamford as well will obviously be trying to chip in with his fair share, but the idea is that um, Bamford is basically the, um, the person who enables the rest of his team to attack well. The other thing we've got to think about is who's going to play in that midfield too, because obviously one of Rocker, McKenney or Adams has got to has got to miss out. But for the moment, as Rocker's been injured, we're just going to look at the fact that it's probably going to be Adams and McKenney. And when you actually compare that to when Javi Gracia was at Watford, he had um, Abdoulaye Dekoure and Etienne Capoue in those two midfield roles. And they were both in a similar sort of mold to what you see from Adams and McKenney, both physical, both strong, both good at driving with the ball, but most of all, they are very competent defensively. So when we look at these situations, let's say that Leeds have the ball in an attacking space. What will happen is, if the ball's on this side, you will have this Furpo, for example, push up, and pin back this winger. Now this winger can't really stay too far up here because otherwise these men are gonna get overloaded in the box. So this winger is having to be pinned back to track Furpo's run. But what it allows for is that Furpo is the one to create the width and that somebody like Wilfred Nonto, say if he's playing on that side, or Somerville, any of those players will allow them to tuck in and be more of an inverted winger in a free role. So what I mean by that is that the opposite fullback will tuck in and almost make a three at the back to provide a little bit more uh, defensive solidity. The two midfielders will push up into midfield and what you will have is the wingers will invert themselves, come inside uh, and basically provide an extra attacking threat. They've basically got a free roll. Now the free roll is they're allowed to do what they want. They can swap wings. They can come right into the center to support like so and then get in there and, and play little interchanges with Bamford and Nonto and whoever else is in there. Or they can uh, swap wings, like I say. They can come out the other side um, and they're basically there to provide extra options to help out those two front players so that they aren't as isolated as they might otherwise be. Um, the interplay as well is going to come through uh, these two midfielders as well. They're going to be the base of this. And so they're always going to be there for those repetitions of passes. If it's needed, they will be there as a base of that midfield to get the ball back, go forward again and get it into those uh, front men who are the attackers. The other thing that we can expect from this team is a lot of crosses into the box. Now, when you watch the Watford highlights from the 1819 season, when Gracia was there. You saw Kiko Femenia and the other fullback, whose name escapes me right now, um, make runs down the line like so. If it was Furpo, you'd get that ball there. And what Furpo would try to do is then put that ball into the box. Now, normally you would say, okay, well, Bamford's not the best in the air. He's okay, but he's not the most prolific in the air. And so he's not always going to win that header and score. But the idea of having a striker with him is that he is there 
to have that extra knockdown. You also have your inverted wingers who can sit on the edge ready to have a shot. Gerard Delafeu did that very well for them, as well as uh, Roberto Pereira. And, and so these wingers who we say in the lightest sense of the word, will be able to tuck in, provide that extra support. So when the ball does get lumped into the box, it's not just a kick and hope. It's actually allowing these players to try and get the ball down and have many bodies in the box to actually try and score a goal. Um, the other thing is that Leeds will probably, you'll start to see some long throw-ins. Um, I could probably just change this line slightly. But let's say that um, the winger goes short, the uh, fullback obviously has to mark that. And then you have probably more of these opposition players back here. Um, but what will happen is they throw the long ball into the box. The idea is, and the concept is very much the same as what it was for the for the crosses, is that these players are in there to knock it down to Nonto, to the, uh, to the other inverted winger, and to get that ball down and try and shoot uh, in the box as well. Now, the reason that we have so many players tucking inside and trying to help out is that they're trying to help Bamford and Ruta or Bamford and Nonto not be isolated in those attacking positions. Because if you're playing against a low block, we saw it against Everton, the strikers couldn't really get the ball down. They couldn't really get a chance to shoot. But the reason that you give extra men up there um, to support is so that then when there is knockdowns, when the ball does come down and you're able to actually get it on the deck, you've got somebody there waiting to pounce and to shoot. Whereas when we had a lone striker in some of these games, we didn't actually have that option to have anybody there backing them up. Um, so I think all in all in attack, um, we'll see a little bit more of a pragmatic approach, more crosses into the box, but we probably will see some nice combination play. Um, we're going to talk about defence now, but I think a good segue into that defence is what will happen if the ball turns over? What will Leeds do on the counter-attack? So let's imagine that Leeds have just won the ball back in this scenario. So we're up our end of the pitch and we're looking to break. Now, one of the things that we will do is if it's not on first time, to get the ball up to the strikers. We might play a little interplay with the midfielder, then back to the defender again. But the idea is either way that we get the ball to the strikers as fast as possible. Now, Watford did this very well with Troy Deeney, who, who's great at holding the ball up. I think Bamford is very, very good at holding the ball up and actually a bit underrated at holding the ball up. So the ball would go long from somebody like Ailing into Bamford. And then the idea is that you get those knockdowns and you get players running off and eventually the ball is able to find the feet of an attacker running into the box. And obviously, the faster you can get it up to those attacking players, the faster you can get towards goal. And the idea is that it's not just Bamford up there on his own, so he's always got a partner to knock the ball down to. And then you've got the inverted wingers backing them up as well, making those third man runs and attacking the box. So... The idea is that this isn't just when we're on the counter-attack, it's also when we're in other phases of play as well, when we can't see a good way to build up through a team, we will go long into the strikers. And it's not... It, there's a bit of a stigma against going long and, and, and hitting the strikers, but it, it, it's a viable way of playing. And it's not this, It's not just hoofball, as some people might say. It's not just lumping it for no reason. Um, there's an idea behind it. It's about playing in transition. Some of the ideas that Jesse Marsh had... But without the sort of congestion in the midfield, it's more that we would get it up to the striker, Bamford, who's great at holding it up. And he would get those players into play around him uh, to try and get in the opposition box and score a goal. But yeah, so in summary, the ideal threats from Leeds in this system would be on the counter-attack, would be um, from crosses into the box. Uh, long throw-ins um, and actually getting the ball up to the striker as fast as possible and the combination play with those inverted wingers who are going to have such a free role that somebody like Willy Nonto, Jorginho Ruta, Sinistera, Somerville, they could have a lot of fun in that role and we could see them do really, really well in there. So I mentioned at the start of the video that Leeds will play a pretty traditional 4-4-2 um, and they will press but only in certain situations. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is what if there are no triggers to press at this moment in time? What if this fullback passes it into the centre back, into the other centre back, into the left back? Now, the idea is that as that ball moves across that line, Leeds will not necessarily press, but they will shuffle across to try and mark those options, to try and actually force the opposition into a certain space. Now, if you look at it now, the only real options are to go here, 
which allows the players to all shuffle across even more and basically sets traps for them to eventually be a trigger to press. But if the, if the player manages to get back here and back across, then leads will go off and they will be patient. They will press, they will, sorry, not press, they will slide across to the other side. They will shuffle in uh, and it will be a pr pretty traditional defensive 4-4-2 in two banks of four. And you'll see this against some of the better teams who are good at playing uh, quick passes uh, and, and holding the ball and having a lot of possession. When the press actually is triggered um let's say that this player has it here and everybody's been triggered to go into that bit of the pitch um by pushing them across the thing that you will see then is that the strikers will push up onto the um onto the central defenders the wingers will push up onto the wingers the full backs will push up into midfield to try and create that um, that squeeze there uh, and then also your two central midfielders will actually go and sit on their central midfielders to try and uh, negate any passing options they have. The idea behind this is that even if you don't win the ball, the likelihood is that you're going to force them into playing a long pass. Now, if they try to play a long pass into here, obviously, let's just move them. So that is probably how you'd be set up a little bit more uh, with the fullback a bit deeper if they've got three up front. If they were to try and send a long ball there, the idea is that your centre-back wins that header every time, then you've got the knockdowns to your other players, and like we said before, you then might go long to your strikers um, and try and get that knockdown for yourself. Um, but this press can be um, avoided by the better teams. Now, you would imagine that somebody like Man City, the people who are expert at popping the ball around quick, quickly, finding quick little interpasses, will be able to get through this. Um, but all presses, all teams, all tactics are fallible. Um, there's a way to get past everyone. And one of our weaknesses is that we're going to struggle against the teams who have more technical players in the midfield. But... For what we really need, we're going to be playing against Southampton, Crystal Palace, all those sorts of teams around us that have a similar quality of player in midfield to us. And we're going to be needing to beat those teams. So this is probably more suited, this system, to playing against the rest of the league than it is to, against playing the top six, for example. Those players who have that just extra bit of, uh, of technical ability. Now, when Leeds are under a lot of pressure. When an opponent has the ball very high up the pitch, Leeds will try to pack this box. Now, the idea behind packing the box deep and tight with plenty of players is that you limit the amount of chances to shoot. When you have expansive play and you have everybody out, you see that there's always a view of goal from these players. Anybody they pass to in here, if we were a bit more expansive like this, anybody they pass to, they have a good view of goal. But the idea is that if Leeds don't give them that space, if Leeds are nice, tight and compact defensively and they sit in two banks of four like this in front of their goal, when a player goes to try and get the ball into the box, there's always going to be a man there blocking them. And we saw it against Everton, Sean Dyche's V that he calls it, where basically he sets it up like this. And basically, he wants as many players as possible to fill that space because they're the places that you can shoot from. Um, and if you do so, when you now look at his chances to shoot to goal, it's full of players, that view. If you look through there, there's three players in that block. He tries to go backwards, Leeds will shuffle across, mark all those spaces and stop players having as much of a chance to shoot on our goal. So in theory, obviously this is all in theory, this should limit the amount of chances that opponents have. It should be much better than what we were having before. Much less shots faced, hopefully. Um, it's always in an ideal world. We will, we will, I think, face less shots um, by doing this, by packing the box and stopping uh, the opponents having as many shots as possible. Those are, then, the general fundamental ideas of Javi Gracia's football. Now, you can see that there are some parallels with Marsh's football. Um, the wingers are inverted, but they're not using those half lanes and half spaces as much. They're more free, and they're allowed to go within 
any of those lanes, swap positions with their opposite number. They're allowed to go wherever they want, basically, in more of a free roll than just tucking inside and playing as a very inverted winger. The 4-2-2-2 that we talked about with Marsh is set up slightly differently under this manager, and we are more pragmatic in defensive phases, and we try to get as many men behind the ball as possible to then go forward and go on counter-attacks by hitting it up to the striker uh, and trying to get those knockdowns for those players playing off him. That is the general idea of what Javi Gracia's football is and what we have got to look forward to or not look forward to if you don't like the sound of it um, in the Premier League. We've got Southampton on Sunday. I'm going there and match day vlog from the cheese wedge so you'll see what it's like in there for Javi Gracia's first game. Um, hopefully it's a big win, uh, but in general, this is what it will look like. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and hit the subscribe button as well if you're not subscribed already and hit that notification bell as well to be notified every time I upload. Thank you for watching this one and I'll see you next time on Leeds Lately.